know that in the next decade, there's gonna be a lot of excitement and interest in going to Mars, going to the moon, going deeper into space. And so how can we engage students in that process step-by-step step and give them a part of that that matters here on Earth too, which is agriculture. At first glance, space exploration and agriculture don't seem to have much of a connection, but the potential for both to thrive in the future might all be contained in a little box like this one. Designed and manufactured at St. Louis-based company Mars Farm, these countertop greenhouses can be programmed to replicate specific climate variables while cameras and sensors collect data throughout the process. Founders Drew Thomas and Peter Webb met while working on a similar idea as part of an open source project with the MIT Media Lab. The project was offered as a free design for the public to refine and develop, with the hope that MIT would benefit from the data gathered by thousands of these growth chambers. The problem was it was very expensive, a lot of parts and stuff that you had to do to manufacture it, such as soldering your own cooling systems and stuff like that. And it was really just untenable for, you know, the average person to be able to do it. Thus, thousands of them were probably never going to get made. So when I met with Peter, uh, the first thing that we did with, for the project was create a $300 version. As they began to refine that version, 3D printers provided a cost-effective, efficient answer to manufacturing. My background in machining really gave me a great glimpse into how to build things quickly and uh, do what we call rapid prototyping. We can have a part break in the field and then we realize a design flaw with that and we can change it immediately. We also write the software in-house. We write uh, the control software as well as what goes on the devices and the cloud piece that connects the two. By creating a nimble, adaptive workflow, Mars Farm was able to make the product financially and functionally accessible to those who they felt would benefit from it the most. And it really took off, and especially with teachers and libraries and other educational institutions. And so uh, that is when Mars Farm started, was to create uh, the, those kits for those educators. It's been a really exciting and engaging process, um, because at our core, we're, we're an ed tech company. You know, we're not ag tech. But we know that it, right now, by focusing on you know, career and technical agriculture educators, um, there's, there's over 10,000 districts in the United States with those kinds of programs. The FFA is the largest student organization in the United States. It's bigger than Boy Scouts, right? So that's a lot of impact. Although FFA originally stood for Future Farmers of America, it has broadened its scope to become more inclusive encouraging members to use agricultural education as a springboard into a wide variety of careers. That's what we really try and promote in FFA. We have many, many members who do great in all the competitions and stuff that we go to. Even though they aren't part of an ag background, they're still learning. Freeburg Community High School, located in Freeburg, Illinois, is home not only to a chapter of the FFA, but also to a Mars Farm greenhouse allowing students to get both hands-on experience in the traditional greenhouse while also being able to conduct more technical, controlled experiments in the Mars Farm version. So the big thing that, that I tell my students is um, in agriculture, it's constantly evolving. So more and more as the years kind of progress, even since I've been in high school, um, it's become a lot more technical. Um, there's a lot more push for precision agriculture. So maximizing the potential of the farmland that we have and using technology to our advantage to ensure that. Inspired by her time in the program, senior greenhouse manager, Taylor Bysiegel, plans to double major in agronomy and plant biotechnology and speaks to the advantages of having access to the Mars Farm greenhouse. I think it's amazing because the whole idea behind it is to grow these plants in foreign environments. And um, I think as the earth evolves, like climate and stuff, we're gonna have to figure that out here and wherever else we may end up in uh, however many years from now. And the technology behind it is just incredible, mind blowing to me, that it can track all this stuff that we're doing manually and do it in the fraction of the time and probably more accurate. Agriculture is one of the highest tech careers in the world. Uh, definitely the first people to utilize self-driving vehicles, but some of the first people to utilize drones. Each farm is also a data scientist. They have to take measurements of various spots in their field all the time. They have to look at satellite data and they have to compile that into what is going to grow plants the best, make them the most money, and get them the best harvest at the end of the day. The Mars Farm Greenhouse enables students to take data collection a step further 
and share successful irrigation and light settings, called recipes, across thousands of units. Once you find a good one that works really well for a particular type of plant, or you know, a, a sequence of settings that allows you to make a tomato more sweet or uh, you know, or spicy sometimes, uh, then that can be you know replicated across all the other devices once that person publishes that recipe. From 2020 to 2023, Mars Farm helped to push recipe sharing even further by providing the materials for Growing Beyond Earth, a NASA citizen science program created by Fairchild Tropic Botanic Garden in Miami, Florida. We took uh, a lot of the design they had already made, developing an LED um, with NASA to mimic the same light settings that are used on the International Space Station. A student can, you know, just by using little knobs on a controller, they can recreate the exact light settings that they're going to use on the International Space Station. We also send them the same seeds, the same fertilizer, the same growing media. So these are controls, which means similar to you know, open source technology, what they were doing is creating open source data. It's gone from about 300 schools to now over 600. Uh, all, all around the world, South Africa, Turkey, Beijing. 10,000 little hands to measure radishes, right? And if we write down all those radishes, you know, the measurements in a Google Sheet, and NASA can look at those Google Sheets too. Now NASA has crowdsourced effectively um, 10,000 radish trials. And so the things we learn about how to improve those plants and pick good plants that grow fast and grow small and grow nutritious in space, those same lessons can be applied here on Earth.